Cemetery. Section 60 is where service members killed in Afghanistan and Iraq are buried. One of those brave service members buried in Section 60 is Army Captain Humayun Khan, who was awarded a Bronze Star after being killed in Iraq in 2004. His father, Kazir Khan, spoke out against Donald Trump's anti-Muslim bigotry during the 2016 presidential campaign. And Kazir Khan joins me now. Mr. Khan, it is an honor. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. As a Gold Star father, how did you process what Donald Trump and his team did abusing, apparently shoving an Arlington National Cemetery employee, a woman, um, and then calling her a liar and questioning her mental stability? Joy, we are frequent visitors of Arlington Cemetery. We are there every Memorial Day, Veterans Day, during holidays. Uh, the staff there is so courteous and professional. For many, many years since Captain Himayun Khan was buried, we had been visiting and we had been interacting with this staff. They are extremely, extremely polite, courteous and helpful. They are there to serve the institution of these heroes where the heroes are buried and their families that come there to visit. Mm -hmm. And to see this uh, was disgusting by uh, Trump, but not surprising because of his behavior, because of his contempt for our, for our uh, uh, heroes, for our veterans, for our military families. In, uh, if I may uh, give you two examples of his behavior that uh, explains his contempt, and this is a gesture of that contempt, uh, what took place in Arlington Cemetery uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, in 2017, is standing in Section 60 with General Kelly, who was his uh, national security, uh, na national... Uh, uh, national security advisor. Mm -hmm. Well, later he became national security oh, advisor. He yeah. was at that time... His chief of staff. His, uh, 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 his uh, 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 advisor on, uh, uh, on, uh, on one, of the, one of the departments. Mm -hmm. later the homeland on, security. Became, homeland security. Mm -hmm. Later on, he became uh, uh, his... Uh, uh, national security advisor, his chief of staff, chief of staff yeah. is standing there where young Lieutenant Kelly is buried, standing with a gold star father, General Kelly. He asks, what is in it for them? Yeah. Second example of his contempt that is publicly reported by all media, in 2018 in France, he went there to participate in the commemoration of end of First World War where our heroes are buried, he says, to me, they are suckers and losers. And losers. Yeah. That is an expression of contempt that he harbors, he carries with him. He should have not been allowed to even enter Arlington Cemetery with that background. Yeah. I was disgusted, disappointed, but not surprised. Yeah. I mean, he's... he. he got into some hot water. One would think he would back off of it for saying that he prefers the Presidential Medal of Freedom over the Medal of Honor. Um, he has doubled down on that. Let me play that for you. I always say I'd rather get the Presidential Medal because the guys that come in, other than you and a few others, oftentimes they've suffered greatly, right? They've suffered greatly or they're not around. He said before that it's better because those who receive the Medal of Honor are either wounded or they are deceased. Uh, I happen to know a Medal of, of, of Honor winner uh, who is Jack Jacobs. It's, it's stunning to hear somebody who was commander in chief say that, but for you it has to be. While I was there, they, I didn't ask for a picture. While I was there, they said, sir, could we have a picture at the grave? You have the tombstone. You have the name of the tombstone. They're crying. They died because of incompetent leadership of Harris and Biden. They said, sir, could we have a picture? I said, yes. All of a sudden, I hear that it's some kind of a, a PR thing. It's a disgrace. 
Donald Trump speaking to NBC's Dasha Burns yesterday, defending his decision to pose for photos at the graves of fallen soldiers at Arlington National Cemetery on Monday, smiling with a thumbs up, despite his team being told it was against the rules. In a statement yesterday, an Army spokesperson wrote that an Arlington employee was, quote, abruptly pushed aside by one of Trump's staffers. And Trump's campaign manager's not backing down either, posting a video yesterday of the former president at the cemetery, along with the caption, reposting this, hoping to trigger the hacks at the Army. The hacks at the Army. Joining us now, Democratic Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill of New Jersey. She's a retired Navy helicopter pilot and a member of the House Armed Services Committee. Congresswoman, it's great to have you with us this morning. In case anyone needs any reminding, could you explain why we call Arlington National Cemetery such a sacred place and your sort of assessment of what we've seen from this story over the last few days? Willie... Your discussion of it as a sacred place is exactly right. This is where we bury our war dead, um, the most important cemetery for that. It's uh, where the tomb of the unknown soldier is kept. And um, it is something that every veteran is aware of and knows and the respect that it deserves. And to have Trump, who has a history of degrading service and veteran service to go there, push aside the um, the person from the army who was trying to keep that space sacred, and then to post a video, a campaign video on TikTok against federal law, but really against basic decency is so incredibly offensive. I, I, you know, he has hit so many lows when it comes to service members and veterans um, with, when it comes to John McCain and calling service members suckers and losers, um, you know, being a draft dodger himself with his, you know, fake bone spurs. And then to continue this, this this really, though, comes across to me as a new low. I've already received outreach from veterans in my district who are really upset by this. It, it just, it, it's, it's really hard to describe. Gene, you're writing about this this morning in the Washington Post, and it is so telling, is it not? that the army staffer did not want to press charges because he or she did not want to face the consequences that would come perhaps from crossing Donald Trump. Yeah. Having watched our public discourse for the last decade, knowing that either Donald Trump would attack this person or that his supporters would attack this person, deciding not to press charges, but making clear the army yesterday, there was an incident where somebody who works at Arlington National Cemetery was muscled out of the way by the Trump campaign. Yeah, it's just, it's unbelievable. And, you know, I, I wrote that column because sometimes we tend to, Donald Trump does something awful, um, unprecedented, unimaginable, and we just sort of move on, right? Because he does that all the time. But this, this just struck me as just so beyond the pale and so un-American and, and so just, really unbelievable uh, that that he would do that number one that he would bring this this campaign camera crew into into uh, section 60 where they were clearly uh, explicitly not to go that they would push uh, an employee out of the way uh, to to get there uh, and then they would take the picture he, you know he, he, he speaks in uh, in that interview uh, as if, um, oh, well, these, these people just wanted this picture. No, he brought the camera crew there. It's just unbelievable. But um, a Congresswoman, this is uh, this is obviously not the first time Donald Trump has has shown that he has no idea what honor means, no idea what patriotism means, no idea what sacrifice means. And and so you as a veteran, can you explain to me why any veteran supports Donald Trump or or can could you know why any veteran is not completely and totally offended and outraged by everything he has done since his first criticism of John McCain, which was what, years ago now, 2015. No, I, I certainly couldn't explain why any veteran would want to support this man, um, who I think, uh, you know, as commander in chief, 
of our military. He, as I said, denigrated veterans in so many different ways, refused to get out of the car to honor World War I, um, soldiers who'd fallen in battle, has said he didn't want to be seen with disabled veterans. One. So it, it has taken on even more of a, 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 a there, are, there are even stricter rules there for taking photos and videos. And just so our audience understands ex exactly why that is, the, the staff at Arlington Cemetery and the Department of the Army in general, they want to make sure that people aren't there taking photos of mourners. They want to protect mm. the dignity and the privacy of people who might be there who are still in a very real mourning situation, who may have lost loved ones in, in recent years. And they don't want to they want to make sure that they are not in any way exploited. So it's not just campaigns or anything. It's media, media restrictions about what you can and cannot take video and photos of at Section 60 are extremely strict and they are very strongly enforced and they have been for some time. That's one of the reasons that this has really had so much outcry because of the fact that they were standing on the graves of individuals who had been killed in, or died in very recent years. Again, people are still very actively mourning these service members there. And then some of those photos were then released on social media. And as you mentioned, there was even some video that was used on it in a TikTok video for the campaign, Katie. Courtney, quickly before I got to let you go, though, we have not received any reporting um, that Trump himself or the Trump campaign has reprimanded or said anything about that Trump aide who physically assaulted an Arlington Cemetery employee, correct? Correct. And we do know that the military police were called right as soon after this, that that incident, the pushing occurred and they came to the scene. They did take statements from at least one with, or more likely several of the Arlington Cemetery staffers who were there. Guys, it keeps on deteriorating for Trump as more and more people quit on him. Veterans are quitting on him. You've seen Republican strategists quit. Uh, everyone's just abandoning him because what he did was unacceptable. There's the, the legal financial side of it. And then there's the moral side of it. Both of those are important. I'm not trying to pit them against one another, but on the one hand you do, as we've been talking about, have this scenario where, you know, you're not supposed to use public spaces and in particular military spaces to do campaign events. Right. Because spaces aren't designed for that. Uh, if you make it partisan, it's a you know, it's a it's a box you can't close. Everyone's going to do it. Uh, there becomes issues for, well, you're, you're using these spaces that are taxpayer funded, but you're using them for political purposes. Um, what's the cash value of that? And therefore, like, are the campaigns effectively making money? off the taxpayer who may or may not support that candidate. But then you have the moral side there. It's like beyond all of that, beyond the legalities of it, the campaign finance rules and whatnot. It's just you have people who are having their lives ruined by these tragedies of war in some cases and who are still proud of their loved ones. And all they ask is for a simple, dignified remembrance. And Trump can't even give them that.